Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to go over another socket and do a bit of a motherboard breakdown. Now, before I start, I want to want you to know one thing about this. Uh, I have had less of the boards than with the previous breakdowns because some of them are super rare. So, for a lot of this, I'm going off of uh, scores and basically uh, other people's experience so if I missed anything uh, please just drop a comment down below and correct me here uh, I, I'm not as confident as with the 775 and 1366 here for sure but I do have quite a bit of 478 experience so uh, I will mention Basically, when I had the boards myself and, and talk a bit more about them. Anyways, let's start with what I think is the best chipset for the socket. Uh, that's 478P. That's basically the high-end uh, Intel chipset. It could be compared to uh, like 775, the X chipsets. It both does great FSB and it has good efficiency, so it will perform better at the same clocks than than most of the other chipsets. Uh, so let's start off with ABIT. Unfortunately, ABIT is one of those manufacturers that are sought after a lot by collectors. So getting these boards is not as easy as some of the other ones. Uh, first candidate would be the ABIT IC7 series. There is an IC7 and an IC7G, which are basically the same board, I think. Uh, I'm not sure what's the difference here. Again, from those, I, I never had any. Uh, I haven't even seen any for sale, actually. They are super rare. But if you ever see one, uh, go ahead, pick it up. It does great FSB, it does good memory, it does good efficiency. So, great little boards. Uh, on that note, this is AB, ABIT IC7 Max 3. That's just uh, a later revision i7 basically more fancy super fancy uh, VRM cooler up here which I, I I doubt is necessary but anyways maybe for press gods I guess it might actually do something at least though by the looks of it the capacitors here block the airflow anyways uh, now let's move on to the motherboard series that I would say is is the one you want and you can get uh, Asus P4C 800. Now there is uh, three variants here. There is a regular P4C 800, uh, P4C 800 Deluxe. It just has more fancy stuff. I think it has a second SATA controller, uh, not SATA, uh, IDE controller on there. Uh, there's also P47. Uh, P47C 800E Deluxe, which is the like highest end version of the P4C series. It's uh, the one I have personally, and I actually also have a P4C, but there is not really much difference, except for that my P4C 800E Deluxe is modded and the P4C stock isn't. So uh, an unmodded board is always going to be a bit worse than a fully modded one, obviously. Uh, so these are actually, at least where I live, they are relatively common. Like you can at least see at two or three per year just come up for less than 20 euros. So those ones if are something you will probably be able to find and they clock absolutely amazing. Uh, BIOS is good, uh, error recovery is, is definitely acceptable, it's not as good as some of the ASUS uh, 775 boards, but it is, uh, let's say, good for its era, so for, for 78 stuff. Uh, now let's move on to, I would say, the last uh, contender on, on 478P, and it's another one you can't get, basically, uh, the DFI LAN parties. There is, is two, one fully orange and one mixed. There, this is the original one, and this is basically the refresh. Uh, now, 
they are good boards, but even from the scores I have seen so far, they seem to be lacking behind Abit and Asus a bit. However, they are still better than the other manufacturers 478P boards by the looks of things. Again, I, I didn't have any DFIs. I've also never seen one of those come up for sale because they are also one of those uh, unicorn boards that are super rare. And I actually don't like hunting for uh, super rare hardware where you have to compete with collectors unless it's it's necessary because it's uh, the best performing board for a certain platform. So if I have the choice on a platform between getting a DFI LAN party and some Asus board that you can buy at like relatively easily, I will always go with the Asus, even if it's slightly worse or needs slightly more mods than than something super rare. And I, if you're in in this purely for the overclocking, I would recommend you do something similar because it's just not worth wasting the money on something like a DFI, and especially not if you're uh, like modding your board and you're new to modding and there is a slight risk of you killing it. If you kill a P4 uh, C800, you maybe lost like, I don't know, if you overpaid for it, 40 or 50 euros. And if you got a good deal, 20 euros. If you kill a LAN party, I don't know, the, the current collector price is probably over 100 euros down the drain. So, I would say stick with stuff you can get. Obviously, if you want to do a retro build, get get something cool. Uh, LAN party is a perfect option and that's why it's collectors pay that much for it. Uh, anyways, let's move on to another chipset that is not the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted. Um, 465 PE. It's, I would say, comparable class to the P chipsets on, on 75, so it's a bit lower end chipset. It also does great FSB, however, uh, the efficiency is just not there for benches compared to 475. Now, obviously, stuff like W Prime uh, is not going to care one bit about that. It's mostly like Super Pi and more Super Pi. That's that's what I'm talking about here. Uh, now, there is again like two and a half A bit series. There is uh, the IS7 series, there is IS7G, SK, again, they have a G board. Let's actually figure out what's the difference here. Huh. I, I don't see any. There are more SATA on one. I have no idea where the difference is here. Anyways, uh, IS7, IS7G great FSB. This is the last full socket generation, I would say, where ABIT was any good. Because with Socket 7 and 5, there's basically one, maybe two ABIT boards that were uh, usable. Anyways, there is also AI7. It's uh, That's actually the stripped down version now. Uh, rotated socket as well. I don't know why they did that. Uh, also good FSB and there is a, a budget ABIT which you can actually buy and it's not terrible so if you want an ABIT 478 this is a dual slot version uh, still does acceptable FSB it obviously doesn't have the VRM of the other ones and it's like generally stripped down uh, it's, it's kind of like some of the ASUS boards I'm going to get to in a bit now Unlike the Asus boards I'm going to get to in a bit, this is still an uh, acceptable board, I would say. Uh, for Asus, we have the P4, P800 series. Now, there is a bunch of uh, stuff you do not want, absolutely not want with the P4, P800. Uh, stuff you want are the regular vanilla P4, P800. Uh, it's deluxe version, obviously. That's the same board back then. I think it has more IDE again. Uh, doesn't matter. Then the Dash E is also good. There we are, Dash E. Uh, this should be the highest end board actually, the Dash E and Dash E Deluxe. 
And there's also an SE, which is the stripped down version, but not the terrible stripped down version. That would be another board we get to later. Uh, again, missing some IDE stuff here. I don't know. Uh, this this also still clocks decent for for uh, for for 65 PE stuff. Uh, however, there is a board that doesn't, and that's the P4 P800 dash X. You can easily spot it by having its VRM above the socket. This one is uh, no good as an overclocker. There is also, it's just called a P4 P800, but it isn't a true P4 P800. It's the P4 P800 VM. This thing has a 465G chipset with integrated graphics and uh, is a M80 export that unfortunately also doesn't do very good uh, FSB wise. So avoid this and the X. Other than that, again, I'm, I'm only going to talk about Intel chipsets today may, mostly because well, for overclocking, the other stuff isn't just isn't great. There is, uh, I know there is people who buy certain. I think it's SIS or is it wire boards for having compatibility with Windows 98 and stuff for DOS PCs and stuff. I have no idea about any of that. Uh, I'm I'm into old and retro hardware purely for the overclocking fun, and. I don't really do the whole DOS gaming and other stuff, so I can't really help you with any of that, unfortunately. Anyways, let's move on to the last category. Let's see if we can find it here. That's the boards that are like curious cases and I wouldn't recommend necessarily going out and buying any of these, but I just want to have them in here because they're kind of interesting and and strange this is a a four 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 eight forty eight board from msi that somehow did uh good fsb i have no idea why this is just in here because it is one of those strange submissions on hw bot that, that got into a ranking where it was never supposed to be or i think 330 plus fsb on that thing uh i i, I can't like give you any recommendation to the positive or to the negative of this board. I never had one of them. And after seeing that submission, I actually, I'm going to get one of those eventually once I find one for like 10 euros or something. So if I find a cheap one of those, I'm going to pick it up and, and see if that's just lucky or if that board is indeed a good MSI board. Now the other MSI boards are not all that great it seems there's a couple over 300 fsb with the the 4 uh, 865 pe and and 875p chipsets but none of them are particularly good now let's move on to another curious case it's the abit th72 now this board is not a good 478 board however it is i would argue the best board for uh, rd ram so that's just here because it is cool and it's it is amazing little board for RDRAM. So RDRAM overclocking that one. Next case is another one of those niche use cases, the SROC P4i65G or GV, but that needs more mods. Uh, the special thing about this board is that it runs mobile Pentium 4s at full multiplier, at least the Prescott chips. So. It, it it needs a ton of mods for doing that, but it's it's, it's here because it's the best mobile uh, Pentium 4 board. Now the next one is here because it is just such a curious case. This is a Biostar G31M4. This is a G31, so a chipset from the generation of P35, so a like third or fourth generation 775 chipset on a 478 board. It also has DDR2. Now, I haven't seen any good overclocking results with this one, but it's DDR2 on, on 478, which it should be good for something. Now, in, in hardcore overclocking circles, this board is probably completely useless because of the next thing I'm going to get to, this little adapter here. Now, 
This is basically your best bet at getting super high FSB on seven seven uh, on four seven eight because you can run it on seven seven five boards. So far, personally, I managed to get this to run on uh, nine sixty five P boards, so the Commando and the P five K. Uh, also, I managed to get it to run on P35 on a P5KWS and on some P45 boards. Uh, the what was it? I think Gigabyte works with it and BioStar works with it. Now I managed to run it on the Gigabyte DDR3 board, which is absolutely hilarious. So you can in theory run 478 at least press core chips on on DDR3. Now this is how it looks on the bottom. It, uh, you basically have to remove the the top of the 775 socket uh, to fit this thing, and after that you have to clamp down the CPU with your mount. So it's a bit of a hassle, but it's definitely worth it just for for the fun of it. Now again, these things are super rare these days, and it's it's basically. I would say the same rarity as a, a DFI uh, 475P board. And out of the two options, I would pick the adapter. They are they're kind of finicky and they, uh, let's say board compatibility isn't great. And you also need to do uh, like insert the microcode into BIOS on the boards. Unless it's gigabyte and it just runs for no reason at all. Anyways, uh, gigabyte stuff. Uh, on Asus, I had to insert microcodes. There's might be a way to get these to run on on uh, 975X, uh, which I haven't figured out so far, unfortunately. My my Asus, uh, what is it? Let's open a new tab and see if I can figure it out. P5W D D G V D V. This thing. Uh, it doesn't post with the. Uh, with the adapter, unfortunately. Now, I I still think that uh, 975X might be the go-to chipset because it has good efficiency as well. Uh, like My microphone turned off because it thought I was rambling for too long, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, this this might be just from from what I uh, like feeling should be the best uh, 478 chipset to run the adapter on, uh, 775 chipset to run the adapter on because uh, 975X has has good efficiency and it is one of the earlier ones so it might work uh, uh, stuff like X38 definitely does not work. I tried that as well on, on uh, Asus and Gigabyte boards and neither of them worked. So there, there might be some mods or workarounds which I haven't yet figured out, but so far that's that's about it for that. Uh, I think this turned into more of an adapter rant than a, a mod motherboard breakdown. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Anyways, uh, uh, that's about it for my thoughts on 478 and I hope you enjoyed it even though I was rambling about adapters for like 5 minutes straight. Bye.